All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. I'm talking on the unbelievable power of suggestion. Call a boy, stupid, dumb, ignorant, he begins to accept it, and his subconscious mind resport, uh, re responds accordingly. You can also start a whispering campaign against a politician, spread lies about him, and you will get a lot of people magnifying the lies into hostility, animosity, and vitriolic abuse. Some time ago, I saw a young lady behind the counter, went in a department store, and I complimented her. I said, you're very beautiful, very charming. She said, oh, no, I'm not. I said, why? What makes you think so? She said, my mother told me that I'm awkward, ungainly, and very plain. She believed this due to the statements of her mother, and was full of bitterness and inner resentment and a deep inner conflict. The real reason her mother said these things to her was due to jealousy, because she was charming, beautiful, spoke very well. I told her that whatever she attached to I am, you become. Then I wrote down something for her. I said, begin to affirm. I am a child of God, a daughter of the infinite. I am illumined and inspired. I am happy, joyous, and free. One with God is a majority, and of God before me, who on earth can be against me. And as she continued to do that, she has changed. She now comes to the Wilshire Ebel Theatre, is no longer down on herself, but she exalts God in the midst of her, for God is the living Spirit Almighty, which created you and the whole universe. Judge Troward, who wrote these inimitable textbooks on the science of the mind, lived in India for 30 years. One time, someone asked him, what would he do if all the black magicians in the Punjab of India prayed against him, actually used the death prayer. You know what Troward said? He said, I'd say cock a doodle doo. In other words, all he would do is laugh at it, treated with derision. Because the suggestions of other people have no power over you, except you give them power. Judge Troward said, once admit that there is any power outside yourself, however beneficent you may conceive it to be, and you have sown the seed, which must sooner or later bear the fruit of fear, which is the entire ruin of life, love, and liberty. We are the life principle itself. The difference is only that between the generic and the specific of the same thing. Let this be the great foundation, and never admit for a single instant any thought opposed to this basic truth of being. That's the greatest thing Troward has ever said. In other, words, in other words, once admit there is any power outside yourself, and that power is thought, however beneficent you may conceive it to be, you've sown the seed, which must sooner or later bear the fruit of fear, which is the entire ruin of life, love, and liberty. I repeat of that because you should ingest that in your bloodstream, you should write it indelibly in your heart, you should think about it a thousand or five thousand times a day. When your thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with your thoughts of good. Therefore, that's the meaning of one with God is a majority, and of God before you, who on earth can be against you? Uh, the suggestions of others, you see, have no power. They have no power to create the things they suggest. The creative movement is in your own thought. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word, which is a thought, was God, meaning it was created from an individualistic standpoint. For the only material power you know is thought. Therefore, your thought is the power. And the thoughts of others have no power, except you accept that thought. Then that thought, which you accept, becomes the movement of your own thought. Dr. Paul Tournier, the greatest psychiatrist in Europe, said that doctors should stop making negative suggestions because people look upon them as men of authority. And if they accept, well, someone says, you're going to be deaf uh, in a year's time, well, two years to the day, they'll go deaf. Or if a doctor says, oh, you lose the sight in that eye, and you believe that, of course you will. So he says, we must get away from making negative suggestions, even though they seem to be based upon scientific evidence from the standpoint of medicine. You know... Many uh, religions are governed by, religion, by, by uh, thoughts, by suggestions, you know, power of suggestion. There was the old preacher, and he said, if you uh, 
drink too much, he said, if you run around with women and you're unfaithful to your wives when you die, he said, you go to hell where there's gnawing and gnashing of teeth. So one old man in the back row had some sense. He said, Parson, I have no teeth. And the old uh, preacher said, Boy, he said, they'll be provided for you. All this shows you how ridiculous these negative suggestions about God, life, and the universe are. God is the living Spirit Almighty forever broadcasting the great eternal truths. The God presence is within you. And the impulses, the monitions, and the urges are always lifeward. Man's mind is cluttered up with false beliefs, ideas, and opinions that his mind is opaque to these eternal truths. Fear suggestions to a man full of confidence and faith have absolutely no effect. It reinforces his faith and his confidence in the principle of success. He knows the infinite can fail, and your suggestions of failure simply give him greater confidence in the inner powers within him. Suggestions which affect us are those which find the kindred spirit within us. Dr. Brunt of South Africa, she was head of the religious science movement there, where I lectured many years ago, and she told me uh, about the voodoo curse. So I visited this particular mine where 9,000 men were employed, and there were three men in charge of them. I spoke to a couple of the doctors who were present, and they said it's true. When one of these men violates the code, he gets a skull and crossbones by a messenger from the uh, another one of the states. And he's told that the voodoo curse is on him. Sometimes the curse says, you will die at six o'clock. He says, this perfect specimen of humanity sits down and dies at six o'clock. So this doctor says, fear killed him. He says, these men kill themselves. You know, the missionaries are cursed by these voodoo doctors because they're taking business away from them. But you know, there's nothing in the subconscious of the missionary that generates fear regarding a voodoo curse. And therefore, they laugh at the curses pronounced upon them and the execrations of the voodoo doctor. They laugh also at the skull and crossbones which are given to them by messenger. But you see, to the natives, they're brought up in the belief that the voodoo doctor has some great power, some occult power, and therefore the suggestions of the voodoo doctor have power because these men give it power, give them power. So uh, realize the power is in the movement of your own thought, and no one has the power to hurt you but yourself. Who shall hurt you if you're a follower of that which is good? No evil shall befall the just, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. No good thing shall be withheld from him who walks uprightly in the law. One with God is a majority, and of God before you, who can be against you? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, I abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he will cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I rest. The truth of God shall be my shield and buckler. Then you are told you not, shall not be afraid for the terror by night, or the arrow that flieth by day, or the pestilence that walketh in darkness. No, for his angels shall watch over you and bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Identify yourself with these great eternal truths, and you build up an immunity, a divine antibody. You become God-intoxicated, and you walk the earth with the praise of God forever on your lips. Dr. Bales, who was a great teacher here in Los Angeles, who had studied medicine in London, had told a group of us at the New Thought Movement that in his last year as an intern, he and other interns would give patients what they called a placebo, which is mycopanus, so that means a little crumb of bread or a little sugar of, sugar of milk uh, tablet, you know, put in a capsule form and colored. Nothing in it at all but sugar of milk, absolutely inert substance. And then he said we would say, well now this is a new drug, a new chemical, it'll take away all the migraine, it's from Germany. A new research product, take away all that migraine, heal up your ulcers, remove this uh, pain that you have. And he said they'd come back next week and say, oh, doctor, that was marvelous. 
medicine. That was wonderful. I need some more of that. And it was absolutely nothing in the world but sugar, sugar or milk. Showing you the power of suggestion. The uh, suggestion by Dr. Bales released their healing power and they accepted it, just like when you're hypnotized and mesmerized, you know, they can operate on you. They can take a leg off, they can remove a tumor, ulcers of the stomach and growths and everything else. Do you feel absolutely nothing? Why? Because when you are hypnotized, the doctor made a suggestion that you'll feel no pain, that you'll be insensitive to all pain, and lo and behold, you are. Dr. Elsie McCoy, who was the chief surgical nurse in the Chicago hospital for many years, she had these post-operative patients. They were crying out at night, uh, you know, full of pain. They wanted morphine. So she said, oft times, I would take a syringe and take a half a cc or one cc of distilled water, and I would go to the patient, and I said, all right, now, my dear, I'm going to give you half a grain of morphine subcutaneously. And she said, I would inject the distilled water, and they'd go off to sleep for 12 hours. And uh, all pain, of course, was taken away. What happened? They accepted her suggestion. They said, this is morphine, according to their belief, as they done unto them, just the same as if they were hypnotized or mesmerized, and told, you have no pain. You'll feel absolutely nothing. You'll be insensitive to all pain. And they accept that. This is the power of your mind. Marvelous power. Uh, so uh, begin to think about the tremendous powers within you. Dr. David Seabury, a great psychologist who has passed on a few years ago, but many of you knew him, many of you studied under him. His father was secretary to Dr. Phineas Parkes Quinby uh, in 1847. Actually, his father, he said, Quinby died in his father's arms. Dr. David Seabury was the only one in America who knew Quinby's techniques of healing, and he passed them on to me many years ago. He told a very interesting thing. He said as a young man he experimented with a ne'er-do-well up in Paradise, a little town in Northern California. This man had a certain habit. Every morning he'd go to the post office, to the coffee shop, and to the saloon, and they uh, were going to have some fun with him. So they tipped off the postal clerk, say, when he comes in, say, you don't look good, there's yellow pigmentation around your eyes, your face is flushed, have you seen a doctor, are you all right, shouldn't you go to bed? Then he went into the coffee shop, man says, have you been to the doctor, you don't look well, how's your blood pressure? And uh, he got up and he went to the saloon. When he went there, the bartender says, your eyes don't look good, your face, your, your face is kind of white. He said, uh, your eyes denote sickness. He said, shouldn't you see a doctor? So he said, the man went home, got deathly ill. They had to call a doctor, and they said Seabury had to go in, tell him it was all a joke, but they had a tough time with him. He made himself sick, didn't he? These suggestions, they were just, uh, they did it for fun. But look, the man got deathly sick. These are suggestions which he accepted, you see. Your subconscious mind accepts what is impressed upon it and what you consciously believe. It does not reason things out like your conscious mind. It does not argue with you controversially. Your subconscious mind is like the soil which accepts any kind of seed, good or bad. Your thoughts are active and might be likened unto seeds. Negative destructive suggestions continue to work negatively in your subconscious mind and in due, fi in due time will come forth into outer experience which corresponds with them. Remember, your subconscious mind does not engage in proving whether your thoughts are good or bad, true or false, but it responds according to the nature of your thoughts or suggestions. For example, if you consciously assume something to be true, even though it may be false, your subconscious mind will accept it as true and proceed to bring about results which must necessarily follow because you assumed it to be true. Innumerable experiments by psychologists and psychologists and psychiatrists and others on persons in the hypnotic state have shown that the subconscious mind is incapable of making selections and comparisons which are necessary for a reasoning process. They have shown repeatedly 
that your subconscious mind will accept any suggestion, however false. Having once accepted any suggestion, it responds according to the nature of the suggestion given. To illustrate the amenability of your subconscious mind to suggestion, if a practiced hypnotist suggests to one of his subjects that he is Napoleon Bonaparte, or even a cat or a dog, he will act out the part with inimitable accuracy. Tell him to kneel down and he will. Tell him to bark like a dog and he will. Tell him to lap up milk like a dog and he will. He believes himself to be whatever the operator tells himself to be. You can make the sign of the cross in his chest and say tomorrow at two o'clock you'll come back to this office and you'll tell us that you're a victim of the stigmata. And the, the cross will be bleeding. And of course he'll come back at two o'clock and he'll tell you that he has the stigmata and the sign of the cross, there will be blood on it, according to your suggestion. That's why the word is made flesh, your thought is made manifest, you see it in front of your eyes. His personality becomes changed according to the suggestion you give him. Uh, a skilled hypnotist may suggest to one of his students in the hypnotic state that his back itches, to another that his nose is bleeding, to another that he's a marble statue, to another that he's freezing and the temperature's below zero. He experiences all this, his temperature drops and his teeth begin to chatter. Give him a glass of water and tell him it's brandy. Tell him he's drunk and he'll play the role of a drunkard. Each one will follow out the line of his particular suggestion, to totally oblivious to all his surroundings which do not pertain to the idea. These simple illustrations portray clearly the difference between your conscious reasoning mind and your subconscious mind, which is impersonal, non-selective, and accepts as true whatever your conscious mind believes to be true. Hence the importance of selecting thoughts, ideas, and premises, which bless, heal, inspire, and fill your soul with joy. <clears throat> your subconscious mind cannot argue controversially. Hence, if you give it wrong suggestions, it will accept them as true and will proceed to bring them to pass as conditions, experiences, and events. All things that have happened to you are based upon the thoughts impressed in your subconscious mind through belief. Your habitual thinking of your conscious and subconscious mind establish deep grooves in your subconscious mind. You must realize that your conscious mind is the watchman at the gate. Its chief function is to protect your subconscious mind from false impressions. You are now aware of one of the basic laws of mind. Your subconscious mind is amenable to suggestion. As you know, your subconscious mind does not make comparisons or contrasts. Neither does it reason and think things out for itself. This latter function belongs to your conscious mind. It simply reacts to the impressions given to it by your conscious mind. It does not show a preference for one course of action over another. The following is a classic example of the tremendous power of suggestion. Suppose you approach a timid-looking passenger on board ship and say to him something like this, You look very ill. How pale you are. I feel certain you are going to be seasick. Let me help you to your cabin. The passenger turns pale. Your suggestion of seasickness associates itself with his own fears and forebodings. He accepts your aid down to his berth, and there your negative suggestions, which were accepted by him, are realized. It is true that different people will react in different ways to the same suggestion, because of their subconscious conditioning or belief. For example, if you go to a sailor on the ship, and say to him sympathetically, My dear fellow, you're looking ill. Aren't you feeling sick? You look to me as if you were going to be seasick. According to his temperament, he either laughs at you, or at your joke, or expresses a mild irritation, or treats you with derision. Your suggestion fell on deaf ears in this instance, because your suggestion of seasickness was associated in his mind with his own immunity from it. Therefore, it called up not fear or worry, but self-confidence and faith. The dictionary says that a suggestion is the act or instance of putting something into one's mind. 
the mental process by which the thought or idea is suggested is entertained, accepted, or put into effect. You must remember that a suggestion cannot impose something on the subconscious mind against the will of the conscious mind. You have the power to reject any negative suggestion. In other words, your conscious mind has the power to reject any false or negative suggestion. In the case of the sailor, he had no fear of seasickness. He had convinced himself of his immunity, and the negative suggestion had absolutely no power to evoke fear. The suggestion of seasickness to the other passenger called forth his indwelling fear of sickness. Each of us has his own inner fears, beliefs, opinions, and these inner assumptions rule and govern our lives. You could say to that man, I'm going to roll with the blows. I'm going to have the time of my life. I'm going to have the most wonderful experience on the ship in my life. You would neutralize it, wouldn't you? A suggestion has no power in and of itself, except it is mentally accepted by you. There is no inherent power in a suggestion. The power is in your thought. You might as well get that clearly. <clears throat> Every two or three years, I give a series of lectures at the London Truth Forum in Caxton Hall, London. This is a forum I founded about 30 years ago. Dr. Le Evelyn Fleet, a distinguished psychologist, she's the director of that forum. She told me about an article which appeared in the English newspapers dealing with the power of suggestion. This is the suggestion a man gave to his subconscious mind over a period of two years. He said, I would give my right arm to see my daughter cured. It appeared that his daughter had a crippling form of arthritis together with a so-called incurable form of skin disease. Medical treatment had failed to alleviate the condition and the father had an intense longing for his daughter's healing and expressed his desire in the words just quoted. Dr. Evelyn Fleet said the newspaper article pointed out that one day the family was out riding when their car collided with another. The father's right arm was torn off at the shoulder, and immediately the daughter's arthritis and skin condition vanished. That's a terrible price to pay for a healing, isn't it? Your subconscious doesn't take a joke. It takes you literally. You better stop giving it the wrong suggestions. There's nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. You must make certain to give your subconscious mind only suggestions which heal, bless, elevate, inspire you in all your ways. Remember that your subconscious mind cannot take a joke. It takes you at your word. It takes you literally. Stop saying, I can't be healed. I can't make ends meet. Your subconscious will see to it that you can't. Uh, a young singer was invited to give an audition. She'd been looking forward to the interview, but on three previous occasions she had failed miserably due to fear of failure. She was giving suggestions of failure to her own subconscious. She had a good voice, but she'd been saying to herself, when the time comes for me to sing, maybe they won't like me. I'll try, but I'm full of fear and anxiety. I'm bound to fail. Her subconscious mind accepted these negative auto-suggestions as a request, and they proceeded to manifest them and bring them into her experience. The cause was an involuntary auto-suggestion, that is, silent fear thoughts, emotionalized and subjectified. You see, your thought is your prayer. If you don't know the workings of your mind, how on earth can you pray? She overcame it by the following technique. Three times a day, she isolated herself in a room. She sat down comfortably in an armchair, relaxed her body and closed her eyes. And she imagined she was as relaxed as a wet leaf on a log. Did you ever see a wet leaf on a log? Picture it in your mind and you'll relax. She stilled her mind and body in a wonderful way. Physical inertia favors mental passivity and renders the mind more receptive to ideas, suggestions. She counteracted the fear suggestion by saying to herself, God is the great singer, God is the great musician within me, the living spirit almighty. I sing beautifully, majestically and gloriously. I am poised, serene, confident and calm. She repeated the statement slowly, quietly, and with feeling from five to ten minutes at each setting, knowing that whatever you attach to I am, you become. She had three such sittings every day, and one immediately prior to sleep. At the end of a week, she was completely poised and confident. When the invitation to audition came, 
she gave a, a remarkable, wonderful audition. You see, the law of your subconscious compulsive, and you're compelled to give a marvelous rendition. A woman aged 75 was in the habit of saying to herself, I'm losing my memory. You can't lose your mind or your memory, whatever you have ever learned. Even in your mother's womb is recorded faithfully in your subconscious mind. It forgets nothing, you know. It's the storehouse of memory. What most people need is forgettery, to coin a word. Because they're remembering the old grudges, the peeves, the lawsuit. They're remembering their losses of 29 and 30, and they're still talking about them. They should forget these things, but they don't. Uh, she said, my memory, she reversed it. My memory from today on is improving in every way. I shall always remember whatever I need to know at every moment of time and point of space. The impressions received will be clearer and more definite. I shall retain them automatically and with ease. Whatever I wish to recall will immediately present itself in the correct form in my mind. I am improving rapidly every day and very soon my memory will be better than it has ever been before. At the end of three weeks her memory was back to normal and she was delighted. She gave new impressions to her subconscious mind and whatever you impress in your subconscious mind will be expressed on the screen of space. Yes, it'll come forth as form, function and experience an event. Some uh, comments on heterosuggestion. Heterosuggestion means suggestions from another person. In all ages, the power of suggestion has played a part in the life and thought of man in every period of time, and in each country of the earth. In many parts of the world, it is the controlling power of religion, such as you're a sinner, you know. And um, <clears throat> the devil is going to get you, and when you die, you're going to go to hell, and things of that nature. Frightens the life out of people. There were some clergymen here some years ago, not so many years ago either, said the Lord spoke to them. All this is hypnotic. And the Lord said that California and Los Angeles was such a bad city that we'd all be taken out into the ocean, you know. Great earthquake would take place, and we'd all be wiped out, and California would be taken into the ocean. You know very well, hundreds or I think thousands left. So they went to Mississippi, Arizona, and all over the place. And of course, uh, the earthquake hasn't taken place. Don't be a prophet of doom or gloom. Be a prophet of God or good. Uh, some people have called me up about that earthquake, and I say to them, can you swim? Oh, they say yes. Well, I said, then we have no problem. You can swim your way to safety. You can see how silly these hypnotic suggestions are, but how diabolical they are when you frighten the life out of a person. So they sell their home, give their goods away for practically nothing, and go off in fear. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you abide in the shadow of the Almighty, You'll say of the Lord, he's your refuge and your fortress. My God in him will you trust. Place your trust in the God presence. As Taniguchi of Japan says, when the earthquake or the flood takes place, the truth student isn't there. He's always protected. Why? Because the truth is your shield and buckler. You'll fear no evil, for God is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. And that's prayer, isn't it? Uh, suggestion may be used to discipline and control ourselves but it can also be used to take control and command over others who do not know the, know the laws of mind. Politicians use it, they use it negatively. They inveigh against others, you know, they say soak the rich and all this sort of thing. They appeal to the biases and prejudices of people. And of course, you know, it's a lot of tummy rot. Uh, but they're looking for votes, and these people are gullible, and they're just brainwashed and mesmerized. Because if you're emotionally aroused, you can be manipulated. You see, it's very dangerous to get into a negative emotion because that moment you have a wavelength that gets you into trouble. You communicate with all the trouble in Los Angeles and you can be manipulated because you're highly suggestible. You better watch yourself.